Hey Python folks, so I just found something really interesting and I thought I'd share with you about Apple Silicon and Python that runs on Apple Silicon natively using Anaconda environment and Python running via Intel. So through Rosetta translation on the M1 MacBook Air that I have right here. And I found that the differences between running a single process, single core process versus a multi-core process is huge. So let me show you what I mean here. Okay, I have uh, I have Miniconda installed. Actually, I had to use Miniforge because if you go to Miniconda and you look for the Apple Silicon version, well, they don't have one. So you have to go to Conda Forge, and there's a GitHub address right there if you're interested and they provide the installation paths you can get the osx version for x86 64 or the arm 64 version for osx which is the apple silicon version so i installed both of them right here on my machine there's my downloads folder i got the mini forge 3 x86 and the arm 64 i have apple version running in this terminal on the left and on the right i have the intel version running okay so that's the setup. We're going to do some tests. Let me show you the code. Oh, and by the way, I have them installed to different directories. That way I can easily alter my profile file and uh, point it to the right one when I'm opening up the terminal. So I opened up the terminal, I made the switch, and then I opened up another terminal. I have two code files here, which I'm going to run separately. This pi sort is going to sort a whole bunch of items. Let's see, what is that? Um, 100 million items. We're going to sort that and we're going to get the time by using time perf counter before and after and then get the difference to see how long that takes and we're going to use uh, the numpy 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 <laughs> i like to call it numpy uh the sort function from numpy and we're going to use the stable algorithm now there's different ones you can pick and uh yeah they do produce different results in fact uh, they have different speeds i don't know why you'd want to sort something slower as opposed to faster heap sort is a bit of a slow one so i just specified stable as the sort type that we're using this is going to use one processor so let's do this test and then after that i'm going to show you the multi-process test which is going to use a mandelbrot and I'll explain that and we'll see the difference there. Oh, by the way, and I am running Python version 3.9 on both of these. They're the exact same version of Python 3.96 on both sides. Okay, so we're going to execute Python and then pi sort and let's go. So there it is. It started. It's going to sort it. Let's take a look at the CPU here and you'll see that it is a single process utilizing 100% of the CPU using the Apple architecture. There it is. And this doesn't take that long. It takes about 13 seconds to do. Let's just do one more just so we get an average. Okay, 13.6 this time and I'll do it one more time. Now over here on this side, I'm going to do the exact same thing using the Intel architecture. By the way, we got 13.7, 13.67, and 13.69 so you get the picture let's do it on the intel side here we go and let's take a look at activity monitor for this side there's our python okay now it's taking up 100 and you can see the kind is intel so this is running the correct version intel right here and we'll see if this is faster or slower seems to be pretty slow okay 22 seconds let's do one more shall we we want to make sure and get a couple averages to see what's going on with the numbers there to make sure there's no flukes and we got 22.25 so we're getting consistently slower results using the intel version of python not really python it's not a version of the language it's the environment right it's the uh, mini conda environment or the uh, mini forge environment i should say so that's your single core execution and as you can see much slower on the intel version than the native apple version now we're going to do the multi-core test and uh, this is something you might have seen on my channel before i did this test before comparing the macbook air versus my macbook pro 16 inch with the core i9 processor over there if you haven't seen that video check that out and just to give you a brief overview of what that is this is coming from benchmarks game which is a really cool site for comparing different languages their execution times and so on so i found this mandelbrot python program these are all contributed from people all over the world and this one is designed to utilize all the cpus 
So here it is. I'm not going to go through the code with you, but feel free to go through it on your own time if you want. And what this gives you is actually the way to run it. So you have the command line execution right there. Now I already copied this program and pasted it into this other file. Let's take a look at that. There it is in the same directory. So I'm just going to run this and let's just get a nice clean window here. And I'm going to execute Python Mandel. I'm going to give it the OO flag because that's going to just remove any kind of comments or just give us a nice clean run and the parameter I want to pass in is 16,000 just to keep consistent with the suggestion that they offer you can pass in really any parameter 16,000 is a nice number to give us a nice runtime. Okay, so there's that. Now in order to get a time for this, I'm going to put the time command before this because it doesn't actually print the time. So I'm going to use the time command and this will give us the Unix time for that program execution. And I am going to run these separately it might take a couple minutes, but I'm going to skip that and fast forward it when it does start. So let's go. Also, it's going to print out you can hear that beeping. It's printing out the Mandelbrot pattern, which is these fractals. If you're not familiar with Mandelbrot, check it out. A mathematician created the fractal patterns that you might see in artwork somewhere. So it's printing that out to the console. That's just part of the program. I know it's actually taking up resources to do the printing, but I want to be consistent with the execution the way the program was designed, which is to print these out. So I'm not going to remove the print and I'm not going to send that to a text file either or dev now. So for those of you that are about to comment that, forget it. We're not doing that. All right, let's take a look at the activity monitor and I want to show you this. There's Python 9 and we got eight of them because it's an eight core machine utilizing almost 100% of all the CPUs and we're running under Apple architecture. So there we go. Let's just wait for it to finish. And there it is. It's now done. And that took about one minute and one second, which is pretty consistent to the times that I have been seeing. So I'm just going to run it that one time because you'll see that we have quite a different time here when I execute this under the Intel version. So Python dash OO Mandel and 16,000. And we do want to add that time command here as well. Let's do it. There it goes. Now, while it's running, I am going to take a look at the activity monitor and I want to show you this. Boom, they all switched to Intel. So there's Python 3.9 processors one through eight utilizing almost all the CPU and running under Intel. So same kind of CPU utilization. Let's just wait for it to finish to see the total time here. This is where a Python song would be handy. Python song. Hmm. Waiting for Python to run. All right. Are we done yet? Come on now. <laughs> it's like watching grass grow. But instead of grass, I get question marks. Okay, we're done. So we got one minute and 57 seconds, folks. That is about 30%. I'm just guesstimating. I'm not doing the calculation, but it looks to me about to be 30% slower. Wait a minute, 30%. I'm embarrassed. It's actually more like 50% slower. So you know what? Scratch the percentages. It's two times slower. Okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Uh, you can take a look at this yourself. Pretty cool little resource Mandel brought on Benchmark Games. And there is our runs comparing Intel versus Apple. Of course, this is not true Intel execution. This is running through Rosetta translation. So running on an Intel machine or an AMD machine natively could be a little bit faster than that because there's no translation there. I'm going to have to do the Ryzen 9 test as well, which is one of those laptops I got over there. So if you want to see that hit on that subscribe button, we'll be doing those tests as well. And I appreciate a like for this video. And if you do want to check out that other video I did with Mandelbrot comparing the MacBook M1 with the Intel Core i9 box hit on that video right there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.